Hi, this is Milady, and in this part of the tutorial series, I am going to be showing you how to take that HDR image that you created earlier with Nick in Photoshop and Nuke and bring that into Maya to light your scene um, and to also make sure you're casting the proper reflections into your scene in case you have any reflective objects. Um, I'll also be showing you how to take an object and place it on a photograph and match that photograph using the HDR image for your lighting and reflections. So to start, I'm going to create a ground plane. So I'm going to go up to this poly modeling. Um, right now I'm in Maya 2018, and we're also going to be using Arnold for this. So up in the poly modeling tab, I'm going to create, hit this shortcut right here for a polygon plane. So this is going to be my ground plane. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up. I'm also just going to create a simple sphere and pull this out and use this as my object. So now to light this, we want to create some type of dome that's going to encase this entire scene. Different render engines will call it different things. On Mental Ray, you want to create, they call it image-based lighting. And then here in Arnold, we're going to attach our image to what they call a sky dome light. So I'm going to go to the top here, to Arnold, and under here you'll see lights and then sky dome light. Alternately, you could also go to the Arnold tab towards the top and you have the same lighting options here to the left. This icon here that's a little off center is also create sky dome light. So after creating your light in your viewport, you should see a giant sphere in your scene. We're gonna attach the HDR image to the scene, to the sphere and light our scene with it. In the attribute editor, you'll see you have an attribute called color. I'm gonna click the little checkerboard to the right and this is what we're gonna attach our texture file to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit file and then under image name, I'm going to hit the little folder icon and browse to the image that was created earlier. So here's that EXR that you had created in Nuke. I'm also going to change the filter type from, from quadratic to off. Um, now the reason that I'm doing this is because the quadratic filter will add a bit of blur to your image and I want my reflections in my sphere to be nice and sharp. So you should now see that the sky dome has your HDR image attached to it. And if you rotate around, you can see all sides of the room and the entirety of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and I'm going to render this and see what we get. All right, so we're definitely lighting the scene. You can faintly see some shadows in here. Um, everything is pretty dark, so we can definitely boost the intensity of this light. So in order to do that, I'm going to select the sky dome light. And in the attribute editor, you have two different options that you can play with. You can play with either the intensity attribute, or if you're more familiar with working with f-stops, you can also change the exposure attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and change the intensity, which defaults to 1. I'm going to boost that up to 10. And I'm going to re-render and see what happens. All right, so we've definitely added a lot more light to our scene. You can still see the shadows in here. But we're gonna now take this a step further. We're gonna try and integrate this sphere into a photograph I took of the studio the same day that we took all the images in order to create this HDR image. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my camera. Right now I'm working in the perspective camera. So I can either go into the outliner and select the perspective camera here, or along the top of your viewport, you have all these little shortcut icons. The very first one is a little image of a camera that also selects your current camera. In the attribute editor, under the perspective shape tab, I'm gonna scroll down until I can see the environment tab. So if you expand this, you see you have the option to change either the background color or we can create an image plane. So in the image plane attributes under image name, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click this folder icon and I'm going to browse that photograph I took of the studio. So now in our viewport for this camera, I'm going to switch to wireframe so you can see better, we can actually see that background image in our viewport. So I'm going to go ahead and try and match my camera up to what I see in the background image by just taking this ground plane and trying to line it up with the ground plane of that in the background image. That looks good enough to me. So I'm also going to apply a chrome shader to this sphere. I'm going to try and mimic the chrome ball setup that we had in the studio that day. 
So I'm going to right click and hold right click down. And I'm going to go down to assign new material. And under the, under the Arnold category, you want to choose AI standard surface. Now if you're using Maya 2017 and you have an older version of Arnold, it'll just be called um, AI standard, I believe. So up here in the attribute editor, under presets, we're going to switch this to Chrome and we're going to replace everything. So now I don't want this ground plane to render in the image itself because I want to actually use this background image, but I do want to try and catch those shadows still. So I'm going to use an Arnold material that's called Shadow Matte. And again, in 2017, it's called AI Shadow Catcher. So I'm going to right click again, go to Assign New Material, down to the Arnold category, and I'm going to choose AI Shadow Matte. Now you have a bunch of options in here. Uh, the ones we're going to pay attention to is the background. We want to use the scene background. Now if you're using the AI Shadow Catcher, you won't have this background option, but you will have an option that asks you to enable transparency. So you definitely want to do that. You also have the ability to change the shadow color, the shadow opacity, and play with a bunch of other different settings down here. So I'm going to go ahead and render this and see what we get. All right, so this is not what I was hoping for. Um, you can see the background image, but we've got this kind of cloudy haze going over it. Um, so what this looks like, this looks like my sky dome light. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the properties of my sky dome light by selecting it and going to the attribute editor. And I'm gonna make sure that this does not render. So if you look down towards visibility, you'll see a camera attribute. By default, this is set to one. This says that this is going to render the sky dome in your image. I'm gonna switch this to zero to make sure it doesn't render. I've also noticed that this light is definitely too intense for this background. So I'm gonna go back up to my intensity and I'm gonna drop this from 10 to let's say six. Let's go ahead and render again. All right, so now we don't have that weird haze over it. We don't see our ground plane. Um, we do, however, still see the shadows. I know they're hard to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the plane. And up here, I'm gonna go back to the AI shadow matte material. And I'm gonna change the shadow color to something we can see, like bright red. I'm also gonna actually close the Maya render view window, and I'm, instead I'm gonna use the Arnold render view window. So up here in the Arnold tab, you'll see what looks like um, a, it's a square with an eyeball in it. So if you select that, that'll open the Arnold render view. And in here, I'm going to hit this red triangle here, which is pretty much telling Arnold to load the entire scene into the render view. And what this will allow me to do is as I make changes to either my lighting or my camera or other options in my scene, you'll see that update real t in real time in this render view window. So now we can actually see the shadows in here because they're bright red. So they are here. I'm gonna switch these back to black. And like I said, you've seen, you can see this render uh, update real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually lower the intensity of my light a little bit more. It still feels a bit, bit bright. So I'm gonna change this from six to five. Uh, I'm gonna try four. Let's just try two. Uh, maybe not enough. I'm gonna go back up to four. Um, this looks pretty good. So now you'll notice uh, in the reflections, I've got this black mark in here. Uh, this will not happen if you're in Maya 2017 and you're using the shadow catcher material instead. Uh, I've only run into this while using Maya 2018 and using the shadow matte material. So what's happening here is the image plane, this background image, isn't encompassing the entire um, reflection. Your, your plane's going outside and anything outside of that plane is gonna render out black. So the way you can fix this is you can actually select your image plane and down at the bottom under the Arnold tab you've got an option called off-screen color so right now it's set to black which is the color that we're seeing in here so you can actually plug an image into here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna plug that background image into there so I'm gonna go ahead and browse this background image and hit open so now what we're seeing actually is the entire background image 
kind of shoved into that little black area, which is not really what I want. I want this gray part of the floor to be there. So I'm going to go ahead and with my um, image selected in here, I've got the file, which is my image file. I'm going to go to the placement where I can control the U and the V of my texture file. So under repeat U and V, I'm going to make this a little bit larger by decreasing this value. So I'm going to bring this down to say just 0.2. Let's see what happens. Um, so we're now looking at just one part of the image. It's not all crammed in there, but we're looking at the wrong part of the image. This seems to look kind of like the roof up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and translate this texture file up by using the offset attribute. So again, the first value here is U, the second is V. Um, this corresponds to X and Y. So I'm going to take, take the V value and I'm just going to start to inch this up. Oh, and that actually worked. So it looks like we're getting the ground plane in there and we've now filled in that black spot. Um, so looking at the reflection in the chrome sphere, I'm going to go ahead and let you know that you can actually rotate your dome around. So I'm going to go ahead and select the sky dome and I'm going to hit the hotkey E to rotate. I'm going to start to rotate this. So we can actually see right now, this is definitely the wrong reflection um, because the green screen is behind the sphere. So there's no way we would see it reflecting into the, the chrome sphere in the front here. However, notice that the it's almost like we can see through the sphere and see this green screen. Uh, technically, this should be mirrored into our, our chrome sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and mirror this image on our sky dome light. And the way I'm going to do that is with the sky dome light selected, I'm going to open up my hyper shade. The hypershade icon is the spherical icon up here. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see. And I'm going to map my sky dome light down here. So in order to map it, there's this little icon that's a square with two arrows in it. This is going to map the input and output connections. So now you see your sky dome light. We have our texture file and we have the placement. So again, like we did earlier, under the placement, I'm going to go to repeat UV. I'm going to take this U attribute. And I'm going to turn this to a negative one. And what will happen is you'll see in the thumbnail up above, you'll see that image mirror. All right. So let's see what that did to our render. So now this is properly mirrored. We just have to place it back to the correct side of the sphere. So because the green screen is coming around the left side, we want to see that reflection of that green screen over here on this left side. So I'm going to select the sky dome. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that again. And that feels about good. All right, that feels about right. So now I feel like my reflections are properly reflecting in this chrome sphere. Um, my lighting looks pretty good. I can definitely do a little more work to dial it in to make sure the intensity of the light in my scene matches that of the intensity in the background image. Uh, but this gives you a general idea of how you can use an HDR image to bring it into your scene, light your scene, and make sure you're casting the proper reflections. So thank you for doing this tutorial with me, and I will definitely catch you later.